Okay, here's an example of identifying types of numbers. So in the previous video, uh, we talked a lot about the common sets of numbers, which were natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, uh, real numbers. Okay, so now we're going to uh, practice with an example uh, identifying all these different types. Okay, so um, so example one here's uh, the set A: uh, zero, negative pi, four thirds, two times the square root of three, one point four one four, two divided by root seven. Uh, 12 point repeating 3, 7, and negative 23. Okay, that's negative 23. Um, okay, so now we want to identify which members of A are natural numbers. Let's do that first. So remember, what's a natural number we talked about in the previous video? Uh, we talked about all these in the previous video. Natural number is something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on and so forth. So uh, 0 does not count. Okay, uh, no, 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 no. No, okay, no decimals, no fractions, nothing, none of that's allowed for natural numbers. Uh, seven, yeah, seven's a natural number, right? So we'll go ahead and write that down. So seven, um, and negative 23. So natural numbers have to be positive, right? Natural numbers can't be negative, so negative 23 does not count. So uh, for part A, our answer is just seven, okay? So uh, seven is the only number in here that's a natural number. Okay, how about whole numbers? So, well, first of all, every natural number is a whole number, right? So first we list out seven, because every natural number is a whole number, okay? Uh, what else is a whole number? Zero, zero is a whole number, right? And uh, that's actually it, because everything else we already know doesn't count uh, as a natural number. And remember, the natural numbers, or sorry, the whole numbers, that's uh, zero plus all the natural numbers, okay? So zero together with all the natural numbers, that gives us the whole numbers. Well, since we already have seven as the only natural number, then uh, seven is the only whole number besides zero. Okay. But again, if you want to go through the whole list again, of course you can. It's just uh, time you don't only need to spend. But you know, if you look through it again, whole number. Okay, that's a whole number here. No, 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 no. Yes, because it's also a natural number, right? And uh, no, because whole numbers have to be positive. Okay. Um, what about integers? Well, remember from the previous video. Um, every whole number is an integer, so our answer at least has 7 and 0. Okay? Anything else? <clears throat> 0, already have it. Negative pi, no. 4 thirds, no, that's not an integer. 2 root 3, no. No, 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 no. Negative 23, yes. Okay, so remember, what are the integers? They're all the whole numbers together with the negative natural numbers. Okay, so now we can have negative natural numbers, and those will, be, those will also count as integers. Okay. And again, it is very important to remember that uh, every natural number is a whole number. Okay, so the answer to the whole number is, uh, still includes 7. Every whole number is an integer. So the answer to the integer part uh, also includes all the whole numbers. Okay, how about the rational numbers? Well, remember, every integer is a rational number. Okay, so this is going to include 7, 0, negative 23. Um, anything else? 0, already have it. Negative pi, no. Remember, pi is irrational, right? Because <clears throat> um, it's a... It's a decimal that goes on uh, infinitely long and it never repeats, so it's irrational. How about four thirds? Yeah, that's a ratio of two integers, right? It's four divided by three, one integer divided by another. So four thirds also counts. Okay. Four thirds also counts. Two root three, no, because root three is irrational. So if you multiply that by two, you're still gonna have an irrational number. Okay, so that's actually a property of irrational numbers. If you multiply um, an irrational number by a rational number, okay, two is rational, right? If you multiply irrational by rational, you still get irrational, okay? So two or three is still uh, irrational. Um, how about 1.414? Okay, yeah, it's a decimal, right? And it, uh, it terminates, okay? So 1.414, another way of thinking about that is we can say that is 1414 over 1000. Okay, so we can express this as a ratio of two integers. And yeah, it could be reduced, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so it's a ratio of two integers. So uh, 1.414 is rational, okay, it's a rational number. How about two divided by root seven? Uh, no, because again, square root of seven is irrational, so two divided by root seven is still gonna be irrational. Again, that's just how irrational numbers work, so it's good to keep that in mind. How about 12.3, repeating? Um, yeah, 12.3 repeating, yeah, even though we have this uh, repeating here, so 12.3 repeating. Um, remember, even if the decimal, if it goes on infinitely far after the decimal point, as long as you have this repetition here, it's okay, it's still rational. Okay, so that's another example of a rational number. Okay. So just keep that in mind that if you, even if you have infinitely many decimal places, any infinitely many places after the decimal point, as long as you have this repeating going on here, 
Um, it's still rational, so that's okay. Okay. Um, what's next? 7, we already have that. Negative 23, already have that. Okay, so those are all the rational numbers in this set A. Okay, how about the irrational numbers? Uh, that's pretty much, remember how rationals, irrationals, and real numbers work together. So once we answer uh, either rational or irrational, we can kind of get these other two. Um, so uh, irrational number is going to be everything that we have in this set that we didn't list yet. So what's that? Um, well, 0, that is rational. Negative pi, that's irrational. So negative pi. So we'll write that down here. Um, 4 thirds, that's irrational. 2 root 3, irrational. Uh, 1.414, that is rational. 2 over root 7, that's irrational. So 2 uh, divided by root 7. Okay, that's irrational. Um, what else? <clears throat> Uh, rational, rational, rational. We already wrote all those down up here. Okay, so these are the only three irrational numbers in the set A. Okay. How about the real numbers? Um, so is there anything here that's not a real number? Okay. Uh, no, these are all real numbers, right? Every kind of number we've been talking about so far, that's, they're all real, so that's uh, all of them. Okay. So remember, the real numbers is defined to be uh, rationals uh, union with the irrationals. And if we do that for the specific set A, you can notice if we take all of these numbers here, the set of all these numbers, union with the set containing all these numbers, okay, we, we enter just a, as a list and not as a set, but that's okay because we're just asked to identify the numbers and not describe them as a set. So that's why we're just listing them out, that's okay. So we don't have to use set notation for our answer here because we weren't specified to. Um, but anyway, um, you know, if you take, make this into a set, make this into a set, union them together, you're just going to get a bunch of real numbers, but it's the same thing as A. Okay, so anyway, the point is again that uh, everything here is a real number. Everything we wrote down here is a real number. Okay, because uh, you know we can have complex numbers which aren't exactly real numbers, but we haven't talked about those yet, so don't worry about those for now. Uh, those will come up much later. Anyway, that's it for this example here. So um, we just have this set of bunch of goofy numbers here, and we want to identify which members of this set A are natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. So that's an example of doing that. Okay. And again, I want to point out this subtle difference here. Um, for rational numbers, you can always express them as a ratio of two integers. Okay, so like 7 is the same thing as 7 divided by 1. 0 is the same thing as 0 divided by 1, or 0 over 2, or 0 over 14, and so on and so forth. Um, negative 23, you can say negative 23 divided by 1. Okay, so it's a ratio of two integers. 4 thirds, ratio of two integers. This can be 14, 14 over 1,000. Okay, 12.3 repeating. Uh, it's also possible to express this as a ratio of two integers, but it is, it's kind of uh, wacky, kind of tricky a little bit, so we don't want to get into the details here. But the point is we can do it, okay? And since we can do it, it makes this a rational number, okay? So again, uh, the subtle difference I want to point out is for, if you have infinitely many places after the decimal, um, then as long as you have the repeating here, if it repeats, um, after, no matter after how long, if, as long as it repeats eventually, that's irrational. Okay, that's, uh, that is rational. If it has infinitely many places after the decimal but does not repeat, then that's irrational. Okay, like this. Infinitely many places after the decimal does not repeat. Infinitely many places after the decimal does not repeat. Infinitely many places after the decimal, uh, guess what, does not repeat. Okay, so that's the subtle difference there is that uh, does repeat, does not repeat. Okay, so just be careful about that. So anyway, that's example one with identifying different types of numbers.